the presentation. This is unit 18 of um, the A2 uh, level. Let's go directly to this uh, look at the form of the present perfect. The form of the present perfect. And we'll start with, first of all, the uh, simple form, the simple past, and the past participle, just to review some verbs, okay? Be, was, were, and been. Okay, the past participle is been. And this is the part that you will use for the present perfect. No, knew, known. And this is how you should learn these words. You should try to learn them like a rhyme using all three. Even if it's the past, like have, had, had. Repeat have, had, had. See, saw, seen. Teach, taught, taught. Listen to that sound. Taught. Live, lived, lived. Own, owned, owned. Work, worked, worked. Notice the t sound, okay? If you're not familiar with that, if you don't understand why, go back and look at the lessons about the simple past tense, regular verbs to learn about the pronunciation. Touch, touched, touched. Again, we have t, touched. The form of the present perfect is have, has, plus the past participle. Irregular verbs have irregular past participles. The past participle of regular verbs is the same form as the simple past. Touch, touched. The third form is also touched. Okay, let's see some examples. Letter A. I have known Tom... Sorry. I have known Tom for five years. B. She has had a bad cold for three days. C. They have lived here since 1994. D. We have owned our own cars, our own home since 1989. We can see the contractions. I've been here for two months. You've been here for two months. She, he's been here for two months. She's been here for two months. It's been here for two months. We've been here for two months. They've been here for two months. So the contracted forms are V for all of the forms except the third person singular in which we use SH, HE'S, SHE'S, IT'S. Compare F, she's been here for two months. She's, she has. He, she's been a nice colleague. She's here is she is. Okay, so we're contracting is just like has. You can do exercise one if you're in the uh, Moodle course, the self-study course. Let's look at using never with the present perfect. I've never touched an elephant. B. Anna has never seen the Pacific Ocean. Never is frequently used with the present perfect. In A, the speaker is saying, from the beginning of my life to the present moment, I have never touched an elephant. In my entire life, since I was born, I have never touched an elephant. Now, <clears throat> this never is the existence or the non-existence of the experience. So if I am living, then I can use the present perfect to talk about experiences that have never 
happened. Okay, Anna has never seen. Tomorrow, she may go and see the Pacific Ocean. This situation may change. But now, up to this point in Anna's life, that, that is why we call this the present perfect, because it is present. It's up to the present. Okay, let's look at the questions and the negatives. A. Have you lived here for a long time? B. Has Ken been in, in this class since January? We have have and has, which is the auxiliary, plus the subject. So we are inverting the subject and the, the subject and the auxiliary. Have or has plus the subject and plus the past participle. Now, this relates to the uh, acronym CASI, Q-A-S-I, or A-S-I, if it's not a question word. A is the auxiliary, in this case have or has. S is the subject. And instead of the infinitive, I, we have the past participle. But the position is the same. Okay, this is very small. I, I hope that uh, you can see this. Uh, I have not, I haven't lived here for a long time. Uh, Ken has not, Ken hasn't been in the class since the beginning of the term. Uh, I don't know if I can go in on this one. Yeah, maybe this is a little bit better, a little easier to see, although I can't. I'm sorry, I just have to do it this way. Okay. No. Oh. All right, let's go to ever, using ever with present perfect. Have you ever been in Hawaii? Has Pedro ever had a job in his lifetime? In A, ever means in your lifetime, from the moment you were born to the present moment. That is why we call this the present perfect. Questions with ever frequently use the present perfect. So just like never, with uh, the idea of the negative, we use ever very, very often with the present perfect. C. Have you ever been in London? Yes, I have. I have been in London. In short answer, in a short answer to a yes-no question with the present perfect, the helping verb have or has is used. D. Has Tom ever lived in Chicago? B. Yes, he has. He has lived in Chicago. Okay, so yes, I have. Yes, you have. Yes, he has. Yes, we have. So you're just using have, the auxiliary. C. Have you ever been in Korea? No, I haven't. I, have, I haven't ever been in Korea. In E, speaker B is saying that he has been in London at some time in his lifetime. Um, he's saying that he has never been in Korea. Sorry, uh, that's not correct. Has Sue ever lived in Paris? No, she hasn't. She hasn't ever lived in Paris. Okay, she's saying that she has never been in Paris or lived in Paris in her lifetime. I haven't ever been in Korea. I've never been in Korea. G and H have the same meaning. Haven't ever been is the same as have never been. Okay. I haven't ever been. We're using a positive verb. Uh, sorry, a negative verb because we have not and a positive verb adverb ever. 
Instead, in H, I've never been in Korea. In this case, the adverb is negative, so the verb is positive. I have been, I have never been. We have the same situation in I and G. She hasn't ever lived in Paris. She's never lived in Paris. Okay, hasn't ever lived is the same as has never lived. Okay, one has a positive verb and a negative adverb. One has a negative verb and the positive adverb because we cannot use the double negative in English. We cannot say she hasn't never. That's a very common mistake. Be careful of that. Word order of adjectives. Okay, we have a large red car. Okay, it's written here incorrect. It's really not incorrect. It just sounds very, very strange if you say a red large car. Why? Because in English, we have a very precise order. Uh, and you have to learn the order. Okay, well, take it easy. We'll do a couple of ideas here. We won't really work with all of the different qualities of adjectives. Let's just look at the two adjectives, large and red. Okay, these words modify a noun, a car, so they are adjectives. Adjectives follow a particular order. In A, an adjective describing size comes before color. So, size comes before color. Anytime that you are using two adjectives regarding the size and the color of an object, or of a person, or uh, of a place, a small red apple, a small green apple. Okay, you're always going to use that uh, w w word order. Let's look at some other examples. A beautiful young woman, the adjective beautiful expresses an opinion. Opinion adjectives usually come before all other adjectives. So, a beautiful young woman. Young is the age. A beautiful red car. Red is the color. A beautiful Greek island. Greek is a nationality. It's where something comes from. We could also say the origin of a place, of a, of a thing. So, if you were to use three adjectives, then you have to really think because you have to know a little bit more. Let's look at opinion adjectives. Dangerous, favorite, important, difficult, good, interesting, dirty, happy, strong, expensive, honest, wonderful. There are many opinion adjectives. All of these words, all of these adjectives are examples of common opinion adjectives. Okay, so beautiful Greek island. You would say also a beautiful large red car. Just for your curiosity, we know that opinion comes first. Okay, let's look at all of the different possibilities this is the usual word order of adjectives. Now, don't get excited. You don't have to memorize this. It's very, very difficult. First, we said opinion. Then we saw that size comes before color. Well, age also comes before color. Then nationality and then the uh, material. It's very, very difficult that you would really memorize this. You just have to choose a couple of very, very good examples. Repeat those examples as much as you can, as many times as you can, uh, so that the idea, the sound starts to come. Uh, this, this is a very good start. A large red car, a large red car, a small red car, a blue a uh, small blue car, a uh, uh, small blue toy, uh, and, and you can, you can just uh, modify the 
adjective and it sounds like it's in the right place. Okay, let's look at some examples. Some delicious Mexican food. A small glass vase or vase, if you prefer. I, a kind old Chinese man. Okay, a noun is usually modified by only one or two adjectives, although sometimes there are three. Okay, so you really just have to think about the three. Uh, it's very rare to say something like a beautiful small old brown Greek metal coin. Uh, even though those are all in order, uh, it's just not very natural. It's not very uh, common. And adjectives that describe nationalities are capitalized. I just want you to remember that. Korean, Venezuelan, Saudi Arabian, uh, as we saw, Greek, Chinese, Mexican. Those are capitalized because they're nationalities. All right, you can do the uh, exercise four if you're into that course. And uh, let's now look at the uh, present progressive. Let me just check this. Uh, this is a little bit hard to see, but um, maybe it's better if you look at it like this. Yeah, okay. Present progressive, that happens right now. So, A, it's 10 o'clock now. Boris is sitting in class. Okay, the present progressive describes an activity in progress now at the moment of speaking. Here on the right, you can see Boris is sitting in class right now at 10 o'clock. You see, this is when he started. This is now what I'm saying when I'm speaking, and this is in the future, okay? But the present perfect really only describes this moment now. We can't really think about the other two moments before and after. Right now is 10 o'clock. Boris began to sit before 10 o'clock. Sitting is in progress at 10 o'clock. Let's look at the past progressive. Okay, that was in progress yesterday, for example. It was 10 o'clock. Boris was sitting in class. Okay, now the past progressive describes an activity in progress at a particular time in the past. In B here, uh, Boris began to sit in class before 10 o'clock, you see. Uh, it's a quarter, maybe a quarter to 10. Yesterday, at 10 o'clock yesterday, sitting in class was in progress. So I'm talking about this moment. It's very clear in the sentence that I'm talking about 10 o'clock. I'm not talking about a quarter to 10. I'm talking about 10 o'clock. At exactly 10.15, he, he was still sitting, but I am concerned with the 10 o'clock yesterday. So sitting was in progress. The present progressive form, am, is, are, plus the verb in ing. So it's 10 o'clock. I am sitting in class. Boris is sitting in class. We are sitting in class. So the forms of the present progressive and the past progressive consist of be plus the verb in the ing. The present progressive uses the present forms of am, is, and are. Okay, those are the present forms. The past progressive uses the form of was and were plus the ing. Let's look at the present. The past progressive were was ing it was 10 o'clock boris was sitting in class uh, we were sitting in class okay so uh, 